Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about basic differential equations, just kind of give an introduction to this topic. So we're going to start with a definition. So a differential equation is just an equation involving an unknown function and at least one or more of its derivatives. And here I have four examples of some differential equations. Some of these we will be able to solve by the end of this class. Others we'll have to save for a class like differential equations. And differential equations is a massive topic. There's tons of applications to these types of problems. And I think one of the reasons why differential equations have so many great applications is because as we observe the world around us, it's very natural for us to kind of notice how things are changing. And so then we are able to describe uh, how things are changing. Well, remember a derivative is a rate of change. So if we can construct some kind of equation involving how these quantities are changing, that'll give us a differential equation that describes that situation. And being able to solve that differential equation will unlock some information about that quantity or thing that we were originally describing. And so in our first example, this differential equation says y prime or the first derivative of y is equal to three times y itself. The second equation says y double prime or the second derivative of y plus three times y prime or three times the first derivative of y plus two times this unknown function y. Taking that special combination of the second derivative, the first derivative, and the original function will give us the zero function. The third example says xy prime plus the quantity x minus one times y is equal to one over x. So we can see our differential equation is not gonna be just in terms of this unknown function y. It might also involve some other functions. And here we're assuming that y is some unknown function of x. Although the variable it depends on could change just depending on the application. T is also very common, usually for time. And that last example I've written on the board says y double prime is equal to x cubed plus sine of 1 half x. So in order to solve a differential equation, we need to find that function y, which is going to be a function of x in this case, that satisfies the corresponding differential equation. And so we say that y equals f of x is a solution to our differential equation if that function satisfies the differential equation, meaning if we, for this first example, take the derivative of y, that derivative will be equal to three times the function y itself. So if we think we have found the solution to a differential equation, we can always check it by finding the corresponding derivatives involved in the differential equation, plugging all those quantities into the differential equation, and seeing if after all the dust clears, do we have a true statement or not. If the statement is true, then we have found a solution to our differential equation. All right, so let's go ahead and look at a quick example together of how we verify if a function is a solution to a differential equation. And we're looking at this first example over here, y prime equals three to the y. We are asked to verify that the function y equals e to the power of three x is a solution to this differential equation. So in order to verify the solution, we just have to plug the appropriate quantities y prime and y into this differential equation, simplify it, and see if we get a true statement. So we already know right away that y is equal to 3x. We also need y prime in order to evaluate our differential equation. So we have to differentiate the function e to the 3x, which we can do using the chain rule. The first derivative of that function will give us three times e to the three x. And so maybe right away we can already see that, well, y prime is equal to just three times y. So we have satisfied the differential equation and solved it. But let's just go ahead and actually take the time to plug everything in to verify that. So now what is our y prime value? Well, it's three times e to the three x, and that has to be equal to three times y. Oh, so that means we have to multiply e to the three x by three, but we can see that these quantities are in fact exactly the same and equal. So we have verified that the function y equals e to the three x is a solution to this differential equation. And so we'll be talking about this more in future videos, but y equals e to the three x is not actually the only solution to this differential equation. There are actually infinitely many solutions to this differential equation. A much less interesting solution to this differential equation is the constant function zero. If we take the derivative of zero, that would give us y prime, but that would be zero, and that would in fact be equal to three times zero. So y equals zero also technically satisfies this differential equation. It's just not a very interesting solution, but there are other more interesting solutions to this differential equation. So the solution we found, or we verified, was y equals e to the three x, but 
it's not too difficult to show that almost any function of that form will also satisfy this differential equation. What I mean by that is we could take any constant multiple of e to the 3x, and that would also satisfy our differential equation. So before we start looking at some more examples of verifying solutions to differential equations or actually solving some differential equations, there is one more important piece of terminology I want to make sure that we cover, another definition, and that is what we call the order of a differential equation. And so the order of a differential equation is just the order of the highest derivative involved in the equation. And what I mean by that is, is if the derivatives involved in our differential equation, like in this example here, are the second derivative and first derivative, we would say that the order of that differential equation is a second order differential equation. The highest derivative involved in this equation is a second derivative. So that determines the order of the differential equation. Identifying the order of a differential equation is actually really important for helping us decide what kind of technique or approach to use in solving the differential equation. And it also gives us some insight into how many solutions there might be. We really get into more of those kind of details and analysis in a differential equations class, but we still need to introduce this concept now. And for the most part, the differential equations that get studied the most are first and second order differential equations. So if we looked at our four examples here, in our first example, we can see that the highest derivative involved is just y prime. So that's a first order differential equation. We already talked about how the second example is a second order differential equation. Our third example here, after we scan it, we see the only derivative involved is the first derivative. So this is another first order differential equation. And our last equation down here, y double prime equals x cubed plus sine of 1 half x is a second order differential equation because the highest and really only derivative involved for the unknown function is that second derivative. All right, so in this example, we are asked to verify that the function y equals e to the negative x plus e to the power of negative 3x is a solution to the second order differential equation y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is equal to 0. So in order to verify that this function is a solution to our differential equation, we have to plug the function y, the first derivative of y, and the second derivative of y into this equation, simplify it, and see that we get a true statement. The left-hand side should simplify, and everything should cancel out to give us 0. All right, so we know our original function is e to the negative x plus e to the negative 2x. We need the first and second derivative to plug into our differential equation. So if we differentiate one time, just using the chain rule, our first derivative is negative e to the negative x minus 2 times e to the negative 2x. Well, we need one more derivative, so let's go ahead and get that on the board. Differentiating our first derivative will get us our second derivative, again using the chain rule. That derivative of the first term will take us back to e to the negative x, and the derivative of the second term will now end up looking like positive 4 times e to the negative 2x. And so now we have our function, its first derivative and second derivative. We can plug these into our differential equation and see what happens. If the left-hand side simplifies to 0, then this is, in fact, a solution to our differential equation. All right, so our differential equation says we need 1y prime, so that's e to the negative x plus 4 copies of e to the negative 2x. We have to add to this 3 copies of y prime. So we have some negatives involved, so we'll really be subtracting 3 times e to the negative x and 3 times negative 2, so that'll be negative 6 times e to the negative 2x. So these first two terms correspond to y double prime. In our differential equation, the next two terms correspond to 3y prime in our differential equation, and we still have to add to this 2 times y, which is going to be 2e to the negative x plus 2e to the negative 2x. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify what we have up here and see if this does, in fact, give us 0. So let's just go ahead and combine like terms, starting with the e to the negative x terms. We have 1 here, negative 3 here, and 2 here. So 2 plus 1 is 3. Minus 3 gives us 0 copies of e to the negative x. Don't have to really write that, but it's just kind of some nice work to show. We also have to take into account 
all the terms of e to the negative 2x. Well, let's see, we have 4 e to the negative 2x is here. Take away 6 of those, so we're at negative 2. Add 2 to negative 2, and we get 0 copies of e to the negative 2x. And well, 0 plus 0 equals 0. So this does, in fact, solve our differential equation.